Hey golfers, it's Thomas Campbell, Master Club Fitter at Second Swing. Well, I'm excited. It's that time of the year where I get to test new equipment out. So today, I'm testing the new Colbert Rad Speed Driver. So it's exciting to see the success that Bryson DeChambeau has had in 2020, no doubt. He and maybe even Ricky Fowler will be playing this driver in 2021. So it's always fun to get when I get the chance to test new equipment. So the Colbert Rad Speed Driver, it is a relatively compact shape, still 460 cc's in size. Uh, the big changes with the Colbert Rad Speed Driver here is the radial weighting. So there has been 28 grams of weight kind of positioned towards the front of the driver, um, where 16 grams of that is constant, so it's in the same spot entirely, where the other weight can be moved around. So the nice thing is you do have the adjustability, but also by having that weight forward, it's a way to increase ball speed. Not only do they have weight forward, but they also have some weight in the back to really balance out the driver and give some good ball speeds across the entire club face here too. So adjustability still with, with the driver, but definitely a little bit more weight up front with the radial weight. There are going to be two other drivers that come with Cobra, the Rad Speed. It is the, the Rad Speed XD and XB. So the XD is a draw bias version and the XB is the back weighting version where there's more weight towards the, the back. Other interesting things with tech with the new driver here is the thin ply carbon crown. So it's really, it's got a newer carbon crown where it's even lighter. So what this does is allows you to reposition the weight across the driver to really save weight and position it optimally so we'll be able to get a little bit more faster ball speeds and consistency across the face there as well. Not only has the carbon crown been adjusted a little bit, but the T-bar chassis has also been modified a little bit there as well. So the design is a little bit lighter to move that discretionary weight across to other positions on the club face there too. And then finally, the Cobra Rad Speed Driver also still has the CNC milled face, which gives consistent ball speed across the infinity face um, to really provide some really awesome distance gains with the driver there too. Um, so the Cobra Rad driver comes in a 9 and 10.5 degree loft. There is also a tour length version with the driver as well. The tour length version is one inch shorter, so a lot of tour players like to play a little shorter driver to be able to control that club, with the exception of Bryson DeChambeau that loves to push the envelope and get a little bit more club speed with a little larger, longer driver there too. We still have the same adjustable hosel settings with, with the driver. We can increase loft, decrease loft, and make the driver more upright there is, as well. Driver, there are three stock options. There is the Fujicore Motori XF3. That is your kind of your mid-launch, mid-spin. There's also the Project X Hazardous RTX Blue, which is going to be kind of like a mid-launch, low-spin. And then the driver shaft that I'm holding here, the Fujikura Motori F1 shaft is gonna be your low launch, low spinner. There's also many other premium shaft offerings where the price is between nothing all the way up to $250. The release date on these drivers, so the date these drivers will be in store is January 29. So for today's test, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit six or seven shots with the weight forward in the, in the driver, and then we hit six or seven shots with the weight in the back. I'm gonna test with the Matori F1 driver shaft out. That's the new, one of the new stock offerings here, and we'll take a look at the data and see some initial testing results with the driver. Also, if you do like this content, make sure to subscribe to our channel. If you can, also comment and give us a like on the videos. Well, I'm excited now to hit some shots and take a look at the data. So I'm gonna start out hitting five or six shots with the new Cobra Rad Speed Driver with the heavy weight forward. So in this standard setting with the 12 gram weight forward and the two gram weight in the back. And then I'm gonna come back and switch those weights around and then put that 12 gram weight in the back and the two gram weight in the, in the front.
That was a pretty impressive start right there, 288 carry right out, right out of the blocks. It's a very loud driver. Yeah, so I'm four shots in right now. There's a couple of missits in there that I didn't quite catch the ball perfect, but the level of forgiveness on this driver so far has definitely impressed me, specifically shot three and shot four. Notice my carry distance went down on this, this last shot a little bit there, but it still was forgiving. That one was a little bit high toll, and the spin rate was a little bit on the lower side, but level of forgiveness so far with the Rad Speed driver has really impressed me. Pushing 290, I love it. And my club speed isn't that fast either, so that was, that was a really, really good shot right there. That felt really good as well. Nice. It's a little bit spinnier on that shot, but that was perfectly dead straight. A little higher ball speed there. Uh, don't, can't quite get that carry to 290, 289.3, but very good. Excellent numbers across the board there, high ball speed. Just felt really forgiving. I feel like I haven't put the best swings today so far. It's early, early in the morning testing the club out, but the level of forgiveness with the rad speed driver was very, very impressive. One thing I, I really noticed with this driver is it does look very similar looking down at compared to last year's King um, Speed Zone driver. It has the nice infinity face, how it wraps over the, over the club. Um, I particularly like this matte version that I'm hitting better than the shinier version, um, but the matte and shiny versions both look pretty, pretty good looking down at. Pretty similar to different, different shape. I know with this driver, the radial weighting has been changed around quite a bit to increase some ball speed and reduce the spin rate. So what I do want to test next is moving the weight around. So these first six or seven shots that I ha hit had the weight forward. Now I want to put that heavy weight back and see if the level of forgiveness even improves even more. So as you, as you notice, I had a kind of a wider dispersion pattern going on. A um, couple of off swings. No, it's not terribly wide, but I want to see if we move this heavy weight to the back to see if my dispersion improves at all. Um, my spin rate was about 2300 on average. I had a couple of that a little lower and a couple a little higher. I'm interested to see what happens when I change the, uh, the weight around here as well and to see what happens with the driver. So I adjusted the weighting. What I do expect to happen is maybe a little bit more spin, maybe that dispersion just tighten just a little bit maybe a little higher ball flight, but let's kind of see what happens as we initially test the Cobra Rad Speed Driver out. And of course, the absolute opposite happens. I have one that I catch the ball off the toe a little bit and the spin rate drops a little bit, but it was dead straight, so the level of forgiveness was, was awesome there. So three swings in right now, I definitely feel like the ball has flown quite a bit straighter on those three shots. We'll take a look at the dispersion at the end and see how much straighter the ball is flying with the weight in the back. Just notice the last couple of shots, the spin rate was a little bit higher, around about 2,800 on shot three and four. Definitely noticed five swings in here that the consistency with this driver has been quite a lot easier to hit straighter. Now that I'm six shots in, I've got one more shot to really complete the data here. That that yellow circle was a little bit tighter, so level of forgiveness when I move that weight back a little bit more 
without really sacrificing really any distance at all was really important. So it's important to work with your club fitter to make sure that you get fit and then talk about where your center of gravity on the driver should be. Very nice. So I've hit seven shots with both weight positions. One thing I've for sure noticed is this driver is extremely loud. It's, it's very loud in, in this inside environment. I definitely noticed quite a bit of echo going on here. Um, but I was really impressed when I did make that switch, the level of forgiveness, putting that weight in the, in the back a little bit more with this driver, that my dispersion tightened up a little bit. So if you take a look at the screen behind me, we can see here that that yellow circle is a little bit smaller than the white circle. So when we have that weight forward, the ball is for sure going to go maybe a little bit further, but then it might roll out a little bit further. The carry distance was actually a little bit higher, I believe, with the weight in the back, because the ball was flying just a little bit, little bit higher and a little, little bit further there too. But with the weight forward, the ball rolled out just a little bit, little bit more. Um, so my dispersion pattern, by having a little more forgiving higher MOI position, was definitely much more improved there. Um, so let's take a look at the numbers and see what we can kind of notice here. So my club speed was right around about 111 miles an hour. I swung just a little bit faster at the end with the heavy weight in the back. Might have been just getting just a little bit more looser, but 0.3 miles an hour is not, a, not much of a difference there at all. Um, ball speed actually was a little bit higher with the weight in the, in the back. I'm not so much focused on the fact that the ball speed was a little bit higher. That's because I was swinging just a little bit faster. But I was definitely interested in the consistency. So the consistency at plus or minus 1.1 with the weight in the back definitely made this driver a little bit more on the more forgiving side and keeping that ball speed consistency across the board. When I had the, the weight forward, I could get some more ball speed on the shots that I hit really well. But the ones that are a little bit maybe a little off center, I lost a little bit of ball speed. So that's why my average ball speed was just a little bit lower with the weight forward can potentially get more ball speed with the weight forward. Um, if we look at smash factor, 149, 149, very, very consistent across the board. Um, so the height difference, when I had the weight forward, I was launching the ball at 13.6 degrees, and then I was launching the ball at 14.3 degrees with the weight in the back. Um, as I predicted, the spin rate was just a little bit on the higher side with the heavier weight in the back as opposed to the, the heavier weight forward. Not a major difference. I believe I had there was one shot, the first shot I hit with the heavy weight in the, in the back that was spinning at about 1600 RPMs. That was the one I got a little bit on the, on the toe side, which brought my average down. But it did spin just a little bit more, a little higher launch. Interesting that the carry distance was a little bit further, so 288.4 over 284.3. So a little bit higher ball flight, a little bit more carry. Um, we'll see that pretty similar total distance overall. The ball was just getting there a different way. If we look here, uh, this, is, this is an awesome test because my attack angle was the exact same. 4.8 up with both the drivers. So this is a good way to kind of test the difference here. My dynamic loft was just a little bit higher with the weight in, in the back, which caused the ball to fly about, it was about 10 feet higher overall on average, 126 feet in the air versus 116 feet in the air, which is gonna cause the ball to carry a little bit further with the weight in the back. Weight in up front is just gonna cause the ball to fly a little bit, little bit lower, but will roll out a little bit more for a little bit less spin. So, Definitely some great options here for getting fit with the new Cobra Rad Speed Driver. So if you come in and get fit for the new Cobra Rad Speed Driver and the numbers are better than your current driver, we do take trades. So make sure to bring any club that you have. We accept trades, we're going to the higher trade values on the market here at online or in the store as well.
So come on in to Second Swing stores or talk with a fitter online. Uh, we are very excited to get the new Cobra Rad Speed drivers in and get you, give you a chance to test them in the stores.